moron! Hey, moron! Look at me! I'm the Wawa Wawa Boy, dude! <laughs> boy. Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here on this finally freaking Friday. Week number three is started already. The New York Jets get a victory last night. They're now two and one and looking, of course, a lot better. I can guarantee you that today will be the Jets are going to the Super Bowl. The Jets are going to the Super Bowl. You know, a couple of things here this morning is there's a lot a lot of injuries that are happening early this season you can especially at the receiver position you can look at um right now of course aj brown being injured uh for the eagles it looks like he's gonna miss this week and maybe next week as well you look at of course like san francisco with debo samuels hurt along with christian mccaffrey uh there um is definitely hurting them big time And then you look at Cooper Cup with a high ankle sprain with the Rams. Wide receivers are going down like crazy. Um, Fortunately, knock on wood, we've been okay with that. Although, what you can see with our Cowboys right now, we have a problem of having playmakers. Fans are easy to go ahead and say, Dak and CD, they're disappointments. They're not good enough, man. Get rid of those guys for other people. The problem is... We are relying solely on two guys. Our running game has been a disappointment. When we say that we are averaging 3.5 yards per carry with all of our running backs, that's not good. Your two lead backs, Zeke Elliott and Rico Daddle, 31 carries, they've got 112 yards. Can we say right now that the Cowboys made a big mistake giving up a fourth-round pick for Trey Lance? Can we we do that? I mean, Dak Prescott is going to be our quarterback going forward, win, lose, or draw. That's settled, settled business. But if you've been watching and thinking about that fourth-round pick, I know most people in mind, oh, it's just a fourth-round pick. Well, here's where you look at this and say, the Dallas Cowboys – could have got a good or really good starting caliber running back. Braylon Allen, who's the youngest player in the NFL right now, only 20 years old, 20 years old, out of Wisconsin, has 19 carries, averaging 5.1 yards a carry, a yard and a half plus more than the Dallas Cowboys are rushing as a team. Has almost as many yards as Zeke Elliott and Rico combined on less carries. That's what you could have gotten with the fourth round pick. That's where we could have had better production at running back. Can we say... The problems with the Dallas Cowboys, I, you know, as long as you have a good quarterback and you've got a playmaking wide receiver, you got a chance. You're going to win some games. Let, let's be clear here. We're going to win some games. My defense isn't quite as bad as they showed last week. We know that they get molly whopped, you know, against physical teams that can run the football. But they're also going to go and feast on some other ones. And if the Cowboys get leads, get leads, then they're going to be able to be a better defense because – You know, when you have a lead, other teams are having to pass more to try and catch up, and that's what the Cowboys need to do against the Ravens because I think Lamar Jackson, you know, has like one touchdown pass or so, I believe, but, you know, and they're having problems in the red zone. You want to make the Ravens have to pass the football, so we need the Cowboys to pass the football effectively and score often and make it a track meet. And this isn't your daddy's Ravens defense. 
it isn't. And the Cowboys have not had a great record against the Ravens. But the Cowboys, I want to say, after a loss, the Cowboys are like 28 and 11 with Dak Prescott. So, you know, you could come through, you can pull out all kinds of reasons why the Cowboys will lose this game, but you can also find ones that'll be the reason why they win. I, I, and it, in the end, it's going to take them playing on the field. But the thing is, you know, I know I'm a YouTuber. Okay, I'm Joe the fan. I, I'm not like a, a former NFL executive. I'm not a former NFL player. You know, I don't work for ESPN and things. I am just a guy in my basement, not my mama's basement, but in my basement that has opinions and gives you my opinions on what I see that's going wrong, right or wrong. Sometimes I'm point blank on. Other times I am just completely off. And that's the nature of the beast when you talk about sports. But the thing that you can look at when you listen to us YouTubers that, that of course have, you know, we're just Joe the fan, you know, whether it's law nation or Vash Lombardi or, or, uh, uh, Rome or DMV or, or game time, Brian, or, you know, you can go down the list. There's tons of us out here, tons and tons and tons, you know, there's West coast that's out there. There's big game James and boss Cowboys. And, you know, I, there's just so many of us. The thing that you can actually take, if you were to take a survey from all of us, the things that they would say, that all of us would say, is that Zeke Elliott is old. It's not to say that he can't be a short yardage guy, and a guy as a role player, but that you need, you know, a young, dynamic back. We all looked at Derrick Henry and said, hey, he's not young, but we think he's got more treads on the tire, and thus far he looks like, you know, Last week, he definitely looked like the real deal, and it'll be interesting to see how we stop that guy this week. But we looked at this and said, we need a running back. We need a running back. The Cowboys go, oh, we're okay. We're okay. We, yeah, we got it. We'll bring back Zeke, who's past his prime. And we all know running backs have a short shelf life, okay? They have an expiration date, and it's usually after four years, they go downhill, I have no problem with bringing back Zeke because there are a lot of redeeming person uh, things that you get with him. Great blocker, locker room guy, and so on. Short yardage. But to think we can just go through and just have running back by committee, it's not working right now when you don't have a dynamic back. The last time our running game was good was you had a young Tony Pollard when he wasn't injured who was your outside guy. He was your pass-catching running back. He was the guy who could do things in space. Zeke was your short yardage, pound the bot rock. And between the two of them, you were getting about 2,000 yards. That's a good running game. I don't necessarily look and say you need just one running back because by the end of the season, you get worn down. You want to have a couple of running backs that are really good. We have a couple of running backs. I'm not sure, though, that they are really good, at least thus far. Now, part of the problem is you're still getting your feet wet with two of your offensive linemen. That will get better with time. But we need to look at this and say, stop making some of the same mistakes that we've been making. Another mistake is we pay CeeDee Lamb and short-sighted <sighs> Stephen Jones is just like, well, we just need to get the ball more to him. He's getting a whole bunch of money, so now he's going to be able to do everything on his own. And that's not the case. That doesn't work. That sounds great in principle if you're saying, we're going to pay this guy a whole bunch of money, and he's going to be enough to do it all. There's no team out there that's winning Super Bowls with no running back and just one receiver. The Cowboys keep trying to put the square peg in the round hole. And the Cowboys need to have another receiver to take some of the pressure off of C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is being targeted. He's being double covered. He's not getting separation because everybody is saying, we don't fear your running game. We know this is the only guy we have to stop. So for your offense to be as good as it can be, you need another threat. Brandon Cooks, you know, I know people will say, well, you know, he's it's the Cowboys that suck. You know, he's been a 1,000-yard receiver everywhere he goes. He's getting older. 
He's had some injuries in training camp. He left training camp and went to Dallas and wasn't with the team for a week for undisclosed reason. Jalen Tolbert is the next targeted guy who's got 11 uh, targets thus far. And so you look at this and say, we need another playmaker. We need another playmaker, either running back or more importantly, wide receiver. Now, wide receivers, you're not finding any out there right now that are just on the streets. We know that people are looking around. We know that the Rams are with Cooper Cuff with the high ankle sprain. We know that maybe the the Eagles, which are always on the lookout for a trade or, or a player and things like that, will be looking for one with A.J. Brown's issues and seeing how they're struggling on their offense without him. It may be time for the Cowboys to be the risk takers. Jerry, you promised us all in. You promised it all in. Maybe the Cowboys should say, damn the torpedoes and get bold and go out there and get yourself somebody like Devontae Adams. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds crazy. But you put Devontae Adams on this roster right now. He is going to help in so many ways. You can use CeeDee Lamb in the slot. You can have Devontae. uh, You can have Adams out there as your number one. It will open up the field and it will help your running game. Because they have two guys that are dynamic. And we've seen this with the 49ers having Debo and Ayuk. We've seen this with the Eagles having A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You need another dynamic weapon. You, you're paying all this money for Dak Prescott. You want to maximize him, maximize it? Then you need to get him players that can get some separation. Because the thing is, when we start talking about incompletions or things like that, people are always not looking to see what separation is. A lot of times you will see, you know, Brock Purdy throw into a guy that's got five yards of separation. You ain't got to be perfect when you got a guy with five yards of separation. When you got two guys draped all over a receiver, your odds of making those completions go down. Your odds of throwing an interception goes up. For the sake of this team, the Cowboys are going to need to get bold. They're going to need to do other than the same stupid shit that they continue to do expecting a different result. I am not here to trash the Cowboys because the Cowboys find players where, where, where nobody else does. The Cowboys, if you take the Cowboys versus the Eagles and how they draft, it's not even close. It's not even close. But the thing is, is that is not enough. In the same way, just living off of free agency and trades isn't enough that you've got to be able to find some players in the draft. It's got to be both. It can't be either or. And here lies the Cowboys problem. And my plea is, Jerry, it's not too late to go all in. Your dime store mentality on the defensive front, going for aging players and getting them signed at the end of training camp is not working. You need a stud on the defensive line. We need a guy who's not going to end up getting pushed back where he looks like he's a freaking safety. And if we don't do these things, you, Joe the fan, you, Joe the fan, that is seeing what we're seeing right here, you cannot blame this on Dak. He's got nothing to do with that defensive line. He's not the one that's not running that football. He can only do so much, and we've got to get this together. And if we don't, well, we'll do like we usually do. Make the playoffs and, you know, maybe win a game. Go home with a bad taste in our mouth. All righty, so Ravens versus Cowboys. Let's hear what our talking heads have to say this morning. 
Prescott and Lamar Jackson trying to bounce back big in a huge game Sunday in Arlington. Cowboys have allowed 92 points in their last two home games, including the playoffs. This is a tough matchup for them. Stephen A. Smith sees it like this. Look, man, last four losses, man, the Cowboys. You gave up 690 yards rushing and after 173 yards a game. You put the word out. We can run over y'all. You put the word out. You can be bullies on the block against the Cowboys. I mean, I'm laughing at the thought of what's potentially going to happen to them this weekend. I mean, we thought last week it was bad. Listen, I'm looking at Michael Parsons. I'm like, yo, man. Uh, good luck with that, man. And, 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 you know, go ahead and prove it this weekend. You, you, you go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, good luck. All right. So we happen to have on the show, quite literally, two of the toughest defensive players of recent NFL vintage. Right? I mean, Bard Scott and Ryan Clark. RC, I will start with you. I, I think a lot of football fans will look at this matchup the same <clears> way Stephen A. did. That team is getting run over. Derrick Henry is the last person in the world you would think they need to see right now. Is it as simple as that? Will or will the Cowboys be able to do something we don't know to slow down the, the monster that is King Henry? So it's not as simple as that because Derrick Henry no longer plays for the Tennessee Titans that was set up mm -hmm. specifically around watching him or helping him succeed in the run game. The Baltimore Ravens are still trying to figure out how does Derrick Henry get the football and be as comfortable as possible? If you look at the second half of the Raiders game, they started to get him going off tackle, get him in the second level, and we all know that he's a problem with the stiff form and finishing behind his pads. I believe this is a game where one of these teams are going to find out exactly who they are. Baltimore on the offensive side of the ball, Dallas on the defensive side of the ball. Who's going to step up and impose their will and physicality on the other team? They both have schematic issues. We're going to find out who has a physicality issue, and I believe it's going to be the Baltimore Ravens who find themselves more than the Dallas Cowboys. So, Bart, I mean, I'm envisioning you on that Dallas defense. Yeah. They gave up 134 yards rushing before contact yeah. against the Saints last week. And what, what are you doing? What are you saying? How are you leading? What, what are the defensive guys on that team doing? Well, what, what are you seeing early in the NFL season is the fact that guys don't really know their fits and their gaps and gap integrity and, and finishing mm -hmm. downhill, so they're playing slow and they're catching. You know, if I'm Michael Parsons, I'm, I'm saying, hey, I'll just watch Max Crosby dominate the Baltimore Ravens and single-handedly do it. Yeah. Yes. Himself. And that right side of the Ravens line is in flux. They don't know who's the star. They're rotating guys in. It is problems in Baltimore on the, on the offensive side of the ball that way and trying to find ways to figure out who they are. I think they're trying to have an identity search because they're two different offenses. When Henry's in there, Henry goes in, he runs the ball well, and then they go away from him. You know, they lose in late leads. But if I'm Dallas, I'm saying, hey, defensively, we should be able to get out after this team because we have a clear advantage with Michael Parsons on the right side of that Ravens offensive line. Yeah. You know, what's the interesting, Greeny, is Baltimore's been able to move the ball 499 yards, fourth most in the league. But Lamar only has two passing touchdowns. To me, this is going to come down to the red zone. And, Bart, I do agree with you. There's some tendencies there with Derrick Henry. But I do think the Ravens with three new offensive stars, and unfortunately, their offensive line coach passed away in August. So I do think it's going to get better. That's a meaningful part of their game plan. But to me, on Sunday, Dallas, they can give up the yards. They have to be better in the red yeah. zone. Can I show you a statistic? Sure. Because the Dallas really? side of this is one thing, and the other side of it is the Ravens, who we were all talking about, like a Super Bowl team before the year began. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they lose this Sunday, mm. in this century, in this millennium, teams that have started 0-3 – are 1 and 129 mm. as far as their chances of making the playoffs. You see there the 2018 Texans are the only ones to do it. So, yeah. you know, Dan, we talk about must-win yeah. games. History tells us this is a must-win game for Baltimore. Yeah, the problem is they're not together yet, right? Like, I, th I, don't, I think it's a mistake to assume that because the Saints ran all over the Cowboys, the Ravens will. Right. Because the Saints' offense right now is, is locked in. I mean, their offensive line, their blocking yep. schemes, everybody has bought in, and they are functioning at a high level. To Mike T's point, Baltimore Ravens, three new starters on the offensive line. It hasn't gelled yet, and as a result, they're limited in what they can call and run on offense. We talked in week one uh, on this show a couple weeks ago about how they're still figuring out how to deploy Derrick Henry. Can they run him out of the shotgun, or do they have to go under center more? Whichever the answer is, someone's going to be uncomfortable. So I think the Ravens are, are in some trouble, 
And if they lose this game, what their next two, I believe, are Buffalo and Cincinnati. They are. I, mean, I mean, they could go yeah. off the rails. So it's an important game for them. I just don't feel like they're where they need to be right now to play such an important game. Let's put the picks up on the screen if we can as we continue going through it. RC, how do you mm. see it? 50-50. You know what? I have Baltimore. I think Baltimore goes into Dallas and finds a way to win. When you think about Lamar Jackson, what he's done, especially in the regular season, and John Harbaugh understanding how to fix issues, I believe they get this issue fixed enough to win this week with the banged-up Jake Ferguson, with the banged-up nice. C.D. Lamb, and a lack of weapons for the Dallas Cowboys. Defensively, Zach Orr gets some plays made, but I believe it's Lamar Jackson finding Zay Flowers, which we saw start to excel in the second half against the Raiders that helps this team win. What does it look like, Bart? I see you've got the Ravens, but what does well, it look like what these last couple of Cowboy defensive games have looked like? Well, for me, I think mm. the running yards will be there because Lamar Jackson's going to put that cape on and understand how mm. desperate the situation is. Now, I don't know if this is a must win. It's a need to win because the Bengals aren't running away with the division. We know that the Steelers are paper champs right now. You know, but I believe that, you know, it's important <laughs> for like Lamar Jackson Raven. to make sure that he gets downhill, and I think he takes over. You know that paper upset. champs. You've just upset Ryan Clark. <laughs> Very quickly, you guys have the – what? Why the Cowboys? Ten seconds. Uh, because, again, I think uh, Baltimore is going to have trouble scoring once they get to the red zone. Ten seconds. Dak, Why? Dax, 28 and 11 coming off a loss. I'm just saying. Like, the well, Cowboys. what's Lamar against the NFC? The stats are all over the place. Okay, we'll see. We'll have much more. Well, there you have it. We'll see what we're going to see. Jerry, you got to do better than this, man. You got to do better than this. As always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out.